Welcome and congratulations. You found the Satori Show with host Amy Satori, your spirit guide to the unseen world. Amy's ability to communicate with and interpret for spirits in that world is simply amazing. Her mission is to use this gift to help people understand what's happening in their life so they can take positive action to move forward. So let's tap into this unseen world together and discover what our friends and loved ones on the other side have to say about our health, love, relationships, our pets, our destiny, and so much more. I hope you'll join me, Kevin McDonald, as we delve into our lives and the world we live in right now on the Satori. Show. And welcome to the show, everybody. We have a very, very special guest and host for you today on the Satori Show. Amy Satori is with me, and I'm so excited because I get you all to myself. It's so nice. <laughs> Hi, Amy. <laughs> Just you and me, baby. <laughs> <laughs> Just you and me. Although I'm going to take a little bit different role today, and because there are... When we talk about this entire twin flame um, concept, there are a lot of people that say, oh, yeah, really? Well, come on. And I want to explore that with Amy a little bit um, on how the entire twin flame process works and her belief in it and her unique story about what it is that she is going through. So let's begin at the beginning. Amy, when did you first learn about the twin flame concept and what interested you in it? Oh, gosh. Um, I originally heard the term a long time ago, but I didn't take it real seriously. You know, I just thought it was a sweet story. Um just kind of grouped it with soulmates and everything and all like unicorns and fairies. <laughs> and I, I mean, I didn't, I didn't really think a whole lot of it. I just kind of went on with my life and kind of ignored it. But then um, years later, uh, gosh, when Mo died, um, which there's an episode about that, about how um, mine and Liz's ex-boyfriends are helping us find love again. Um, if you want to listen to that story, because I don't want to go into the whole thing here, but basically when Mo died, he said that it was his mission to help me find love, to find true love. And that was very romantic and very sweet. And, um, he, you know, started kind of encouraging me to go to Boulder and he said that I would meet him in Boulder. So I, I wasn't labeling it anything like, a, I was like, okay, I guess I'm being led to true love or to my soulmate or something like that. And I just kind of followed the promptings, and I went to Boulder, and, um, you know, my career started taking off, and things really seemed to be working out. Not quite like I thought, because I thought I was going to work for this spiritual teacher, um, but um, even better, actually, because my life took, it took a different turn, and things started really um, being pretty incredible. Um, I would meet guys here and there that were kind of shaping and forming me along the way, getting me ready for for the guy that I was to meet. Um, and then February 24th of last year, um, that guy came in to get a reading at the Lighthouse Bookstore. <laughs> and his friend had, uh, his female friend who lives in the area, um, had come in for a reading and really thought it was pretty great. So she went and grabbed him and she's like, you got to go see this girl. And so, so um, he had he had a little ten minute reading. I look back in the records; it was just ten minutes. But um, and I just remember I liked his name a lot, and he was just as cute as his name was cool. So <laughs> that was my first impression. But I get you know I mean I get cute guys in there. Um, it's not all that rare, but I for some odd reason did remember him. Um, so basically, um, a couple months. Later, he um, ordered a reading online, and so we we talked for about 15 minutes about what he was trying to decide at that time, and it did have to do with relationships, and, and then he got interrupted for work, and then we had to talk some other time, so a week or two went by, I think, and um, we had another session, but in between there, it was really funny because... 
I had started taking a course on how to find your soulmate in 27 days because I was like, I am sick and tired of, you know, getting online and looking, you know, for these guys and dating these other guys and liking this guy. But then I found out he has a girlfriend or just he just felt so bled to me. And I was like, I don't even want to date anymore. I just want to know who this person is once and for all. And then just have it done with. (laughs) And so... Um, I started taking this class on how to find your soulmate in 27 days and not having anybody in mind at all. I had already talked to him, you know, our first session for about 15 minutes, but I, I really did not, was not considering him or thinking about him that way. In fact, I was actually really liking, I was falling in love with my best friend at the time, <laughs> to be really honest. Um, so I liked somebody else, but I still was like, eh, I don't, mm, I just want to get to the bottom of this. So I took this course. And I was about on the fourth day, and it tells you to, um, it tells you to pick out something that's been in your history that both of you would have in common that would really stand out, so that when you meet him, you will know. And so I really thought about it for a couple of days, and I thought, I know, I know what, what I want, you know, to do is like pick somebody who's experienced enlightenment, and I had. You know, it was a really profound experience for me that lasted about six months. And it it was really incredible. And it's really rare if I ever do hear of somebody who has been through that. It's usually through drugs or something like that. So I wanted it to be natural. And I wanted it to be like an experience like mine. So because um, I hadn't really, I'd only, it was very, it's just very rare that I would ever hear of a real true enlightenment experience like mine. So that's what I thought. Even if it's a needle in a haystack and even if it takes 20 or 30 years, I don't care. I've put it out to the universe and that's what I want. And I kid you not, the day after I put this in my diary and had finally decided what the criteria was, he called for his second session to finish up. And, of course, I was like, okay, well, you know, let's finish our session and super professional and I'm talking to him the whole time and then we get to the end and he's like, you know, how do I, how do I find like the one? Like he says, I don't want to date anymore. I just want to find my soulmate. (laughs) He seriously says this. And I said, you know what? I said, you and me both. I was like, I'm sick and tired of this whole stupid dating thing. And so, um, so he said, you know, how do I navigate that? How do I know when she's the one? And I said, you know, and I knew he was, he was real Christian and, So I was careful of how I said this, but I was basically just saying, you know, really stay in the moment and fill yourself with the Holy Spirit and you will find the answers and guidance you're looking for and everything. He goes, Amy, I know what you're talking about. And I said, what? And he said, you're talking about enlightenment. And I said, uh, I was kind of scared to admit it. I said, okay, yes, that's true. That's true. It's the same thing. And he said, well, I know because I've been enlightened before. And... I just, like, sat up in my chair. I'm like, excuse me? And I was thinking, there's no way that this would happen in a day. (laughs) But but I definitely perked up. I was like, excuse me? And I said, look, I'm not going to charge you for the rest of this time, but I really want you to go into that if you've got the time. And so we talked for... We talked for probably a half an hour longer, and he told me all about his experience, and I kid you not, man, like, I just about identical... Um, There was just something he hadn't experienced that I had that was just, you know, slight. It was about the colors I'd seen and the vividness of those colors. He didn't see that um, when he went through his experience. But I thought, you know, one in a million chances, number one, that I found this guy who had a similar experience to me. And number two, that it would be the day after I asked for it. So he definitely got my attention at that point, and I was definitely on alert, but again, still like falling in love with this other guy and not really giving it a whole lot of, you know, I'm very professional. I'm very, very professional. So I just kept it at that level. And um, about a week or two later on Easter, it's funny because Easter's coming up, but I basically um, was hanging out with this other guy I had feelings for, and we were talking about enlightenment. And when he had talked about, um, you know, when are you going to be enlightened again? And I was like, I don't know. It's not like I'm planning for it. I kind of let that go. And he said, well, 
he said, why don't you, why don't you do it again? I mean, it seems like a good time to do it. <laughs> I said, you know, you're right. I, I looked around. And I was like, I'm in a place that would support it. I have friends that would support it. I have an employer that would support it. And I just pondered it for a few minutes. And I thought, why don't I? Why don't I just enlighten again? So I literally walked into the living room and I did it again within a matter of probably about a half hour. I was awake again. Um, the peace of God had just completely consumed my body. I was in a really blissed out state. Um, I could hardly talk. And he, he looks over at me. He's on the couch. The guy I liked, I'm not saying any names. He was over on the couch and he looks over at me. He goes, oh, my God, you did it again, didn't you? <laughs> he goes, go, oh, I'm so jealous. He's like, I've been trying for months to become enlightened. And you just do it just like that, just because I say so? <laughs> and I said, I said, you know, I just took it like I wanted to hold on to the energy, so I didn't want to get involved in any drama or any anything that would kind of knock me off center. So I just kind of acknowledged him and laughed and, and was just in that place of peace. And I was in that for probably three to five days. It just felt so incredible, and I could barely speak. And the only thing I could think that could possibly come out of my mouth would be like, just be still. That's all I could think to say to anybody. Uh, but after a couple of days, I thought, this is crazy because I just told this guy like a week or two ago that, you know, I've been enlightened. And then I was just like, I felt like reaching out to him. So I texted him and I said, I, said, I think I'm waking up again. And to my shock, he texted me back and he said, me too. And I was like, you've got to be kidding me. You have got to be freaking kidding me. This is like impossible. This is just like no way. So as I was, I was like, okay, stay, stay, stay in this. You know, I'm not going to let this, you know, hinder me or take me off of, of this love feeling. So I just stayed in it. Um, and then things started to come to me like, oh, well, how are you going to keep your job if you're enlightened? Yeah, all you'll say to somebody is just sit with them and give them your peace and say, you know, just be silent with me. <laughs> and I was like, how am I going to make a living and how am I going to eat? How am I going to live anywhere? How am I going to? And those types of thoughts started creeping in. And so it kind of knocked me out of that state. I mean, it's as um, profound um, as profoundly in that state. And it started to kind of trickle off. And then I went to um, I went to a massage therapist about a week later, and I told her I've been going through this incredible, like, reawakening. And I said, I just would like a massage, please. And so she is very telepathic. She has been since she was a child. She worked on me. And afterwards, I got off the table, and she said, I saw the weirdest thing. And I said, what? She said, well, it's like half of you was leaning forward into enlightenment and the other was digging its heels in. And she said, and then I saw some kind of tether. It's like you're tethered to somebody who doesn't live in this state. And I was like, are you sure it's not this guy that I like? And she said, no, not that one. She said, this one you already know about. And you know about others prior awakening. And I was like, are you kidding me? I'm like looking at her with my jaw to the floor. She said, it's him. And I said, well, can I cut the cord? I mean, do I, I don't have to be with this guy, do I? <laughs> and she just laughs and she says, you can't, you can't destroy this cord. It's not the kind of cord that can be, you know, destroyed. And I said, well, what does that mean? Is he a soulmate? Or she goes, I don't know. You're going to have to discover that for yourself. And I didn't want to freak my masculine out at that point, but I wanted him to know what happened because I don't know. It was pretty shocking. So I texted him and told him, I was like, you're not going to believe this, but my massage therapist says this. And then um, I had the feeling he would come and visit a month after that text, and he did. Um, he showed up on Memorial Day and spent about, I think it was like two or three hours talking to me back in my reader area. And it was one of the coolest conversations ever. It was so awesome. But anyway, it was it was about... Um, I would say, you know, that whole process with me kind of realizing what a big deal this was, 
I mean, what are the what are the chances of any of any of it happening? Let alone all of it. It was like God didn't want to, you know, let one thing go. But like He's like, look, in case you didn't get it that time, here's another thing. Oh, and in case you didn't understand at that point, here's another. And seriously, it's been like that ever since. Like nonstop, nonstop signals and and telling me things. And even like I've gone to try to date other guys, and I have <laughs> like girl Alicia that came on the show um, before I really knew her very well she even at some point when I was seeing this other guy she comes down and she says can I talk to you for a minute she says Jesus has a message for you and I'm like looking at her like oh well of course I'm going to say yes to that are you kidding me (laughs) Um, but she didn't know anything about me but she takes me aside and she says you've got two guys you're juggling and she says one of them you know is meant for you the other you need to get rid of and I was just looking at her like are you kidding me right now (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and so um, she says, but do it gently and do it slowly, like step by step. You know, don't alarm him. Just start to, you know, get away from him. So I did. I mean, who's not going to listen to Jesus sending some woman down to do that? And then another, like a a month or so later, I was still hanging out with the guy, but it was, but it had tapered off and I was setting my boundaries and all that kind of stuff. And then. She comes in, and I was really doubting, like, this guy hasn't talked to me for so long. He doesn't even, I was just, I was going through all this doubt. And she said, Jesus sends her again. She comes down to the bottom of the stairs of my work and looks at me. She goes, I just rode the bus here from Denver, and I don't know what I'm here for, but Jesus wants to tell you that whatever it is you're doubting, stop it, because this is real, and it's true, and go forward. She goes, I guess that's all he wanted to say. And then she leaves. (laughs) (laughs) Are you kidding me? <laughs> it's been that way every step every step of the way. I mean, it's just become profoundly obvious to me that this is supposed to happen, but I have no idea how, and I have no it, it's like I have no reason to believe in it whatsoever because he hasn't talked to me since July of last year when we had another two or two two hour conversation, I think it was, um which was also really cool. But, um, yeah, it's like I've got no reason to believe in it. I mean, he, he's outright rejected me. He, he's told me his beliefs do not align with mine anymore. Um, so there's really, I've got no reason at all to believe that this would even happen, except that it just seems like God in all heaven is saying, Amy, this is him. <laughs> so, so how does that make you weird. feel? It's a pretty weird journey. Yeah, well, how does that make you feel? Well, you know... I have learned, like, once I started, to, like, getting into this and, and being like, what the heck is this all about? When when all these coincidences were happening, like, like tons of them were happening at once, I was like, I got to look into this. And then it was like this one day happened where, like, I don't know, like, like 17 to 20 people came in and they were all wondering who their who their twin flame or soulmate was. In one day, and I thought, okay, this is a sign. I'm supposed to go here. So I started studying it, really looking into it. I started watching Collective Twin Flame readings on YouTube. Um, And I started to kind of trace the trail and watch for patterns and things that were going on. I kind of watched the journey, and I I learned the tarot, uh, which I had never known before. Um, studied it through these different readings. I mean, I, I really started getting into it. And then I started realizing, oh, my gosh, these are thousands of people all experiencing the same ride. They're all going through the same thing. And it's so funny because everybody had, all the divine feminines had 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 been rejected and had gotten over like some really bad hurt feelings from their masculine. And I was kind of like, okay, that's the only thing that doesn't really ring true for me in these readings. Like he's never hurt me. I could never imagine him doing that. Um, he would never lie to me. He would never betray me. I just was really... Because his higher self was talking to me at the time, and he was, like, all about honesty. Um, And he was just like, I will tell you anything. You just ask me anything. I don't care. And he proved it to me a couple times. And I was like, okay, that's a little TMI. But um, so he was all about honesty. So um, when it happened to me, I was just, uh, man, it just shook shook me up bad. And and then then I had this realization of, oh. This is this is the moment they're talking about. This is what I have to recover from. This is the betrayal that then I then have to kind of get back on my feet about and discover deeper who I am, who I really, you know, 
am at my core and what I really believe in and what I really um, have faith in even. And it really actually made me more resilient and stronger as a result. And, um, I mean, I wouldn't look at readings for days after what happened. It just devastated me pretty bad. And then I thought, well, I'm going to do what I always do when I'm hurt, and I'm going to go to do Byron Katie's work and look at myself and see what it is I'm believing about me, what it is that, um, what it is I feel just rang a bell for me or rang true for me about what he said. And so I started diving into that. And then um, once I did finally look at a reading, because the title caught me, she says, first off, <laughs> and this, ha- this has happened, I can't even tell you how many times. It's like, I feel like I'm in the never-ending story. And when I'm reading the book, it's all about me. It's crazy. But I listen to this reading and she says, oh my gosh, and like all the Divine Feminine readings have have always been positive up until this point. You know, they've always been. She's very, um, you know, happy, and she's just kind of waiting for her masculine to catch up while he's going through his dark night of the soul and all that. But, so I get on there and I'm thinking, okay, I can't, in this in this despairing moment, I cannot get imagine how the Divine Feminine is going to go in these readings from being super positive, happy on top of the world to anything less than that. And but I watched it anyway, you know, facing that moment. And I kid you not, she gets on there and she says, holy cow, Divine Feminine, what's happened to you? Something's hit you hard. You've been stabbed in the back and left for dead. And then she says, but just know that this is a 10. It was the 10 of swords. She goes, just know this, that this is a 10. He'll never do you that to you again. He will never hurt you that bad again. And I was like, whoa. <laughs> holy cow, I cannot believe this. And then she, you know, went on and everything she said in the reading was spot on. And she said, you know, he's going through a a crisis of faith and he's going through like all this, all this stuff. And um, I don't know, she just, it it was just from there. I was like hooked back in just going, okay, well, all right. (laughs) It's just been like that all along. It's just been like one thing, like, okay, so one time this guy, this guy, um, we were having a great time one night. He took me out, and, and um, we spent a couple hours together, and we're having dinner. And he looks across at me, and he goes, this guy that you're talking about, he says, that's just unrequited love. He doesn't he doesn't love you back. He doesn't even, you know, he's, he's written you off. And he just doesn't like you. And he goes, the faster you realize that, the, you know, the better. And so I said, you know, I said, I'm open to that, actually. You know, I've got a pretty darn open mind, and... If that's the reality of it, I'm cool with that. And um, so I got home and he sends me a text. He goes, if you really want to know the truth, which I always do, um, he said, then drop a red jasper in water next to your bed and pray for the truth to be revealed. And I was like, I don't know what this is about, but I was so tired when I got the text. It was like super late. And I said, all right, I'll do it. And oddly enough, this is so funny because I just made a batch of um, holy water, which I'd never made before. So that's all I had is a jar of water around me. And it's funny because twin flames are like a spiritual union. So all I find is this holy water. So I dropped the red jasper in the holy water next to the bed. And I said, God, just please tell me, like, if I need to drop this, just let me know because I'm done. You know, I'm tired of this anyway. And he's not responding, so forget it. I'm just going to move on. Um, So, and then I talked to his higher self for a moment, and I said, look, (laughs) I said, this is do or die. I'm going to wake up tomorrow and move on from you and never speak to you again or never never care about this whole journey again Um, as of tomorrow if I do not hear from you in the physical. And I mean not your higher self, not signs, not songs, not all this other crap. I really want to hear from you, the person tomorrow or I'm done and I went to sleep and I woke up and I had a text message from him and he said thank you so much for that talk a couple of weeks ago that meant a lot to me and I was like holy crap <laughs> like, I never hear from this guy and of all the times wow. I hear from him it's the morning that this other guy challenged me and then so I told the guy about it and then the guy ends up telling me, you know, I was kind of turned on by our hug the other night. And I'm like, oh, okay, so you had, like, ill intentions anyway. So, you know, you got to also keep that in mind. Those naysayers could be, it could be just because they like you. 
So, well, so but yeah, we I, get ridiculed. All, those of us, well, um, as the divine feminines, we definitely get people looking at us with that look of, oh, you poor thing. Oh, you, you know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was... <laughs> I was going to mention that because it's kind of like, oh dear, oh my, you're 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 not looking at. But you see, when you look at it in the totality totality of what you're describing to me, it's almost like there's a divine plan in place, and you just need to be open to it, and it will all unfold naturally. And but no matter how long it takes. Yeah. But my question then is, what happens if he? Whoever he is, is never ready. Are you prepared for that? Totally, yeah. I mean, he could take his time. He could do whatever he wants to. And I'm not trying to force him into anything by any means. Um, or we could just be friends or whatever, you know, because I know sometimes the masculine really wants to have a friendship first because it makes them feel very comfortable. And, they, you know, and it's a good foundation to have anyway because you build that trust and uh, we already feel like we can tell each other anything because we do tell each other anything. <laughs> the talks that we have have had have been very sincere and, um, you know, our complete hearts wide open. So um, there's that already. But, um, like, it, you know, it's, it's he. Here's the thing about the masculines, though. <laughs> they are, by nature, growing and wanting to grow and strive all the time. They're not going to sit still and they're not going to go backwards. And as the feminines, we kind of, we are like uh, an ideal for them as their future. I mean, it's designed that, that way. They look up to us in some way and see us being what they need in order to become their full beauty. You know, so they're naturally drawn to us all the time. It's like they think about us a lot, and they're, it's like a magnet on both sides. They may fool themselves a while and, and, and like lie to themselves or be in denial, or, you know, they go through all several different stages. They may each actually marry someone or go into relationships or whatever, but they don't give their full heart like they do with their feminine to these other people. And those other people are essentially just continuously getting them ready for us, I feel. So um, I have faith in that. And, um, yeah, it's pretty, it's when you start to see it through all, I mean, I've, I've dealt with like hundreds of, of twin flames now and they all say the same thing and you start to see the same story play out over and over. You start to just really have faith in, in, you know, in that journey. It's, you know, it's interesting because you are in a particular place in your journey and there are other people that are in that place or were in that place and ha are moving to another place if that makes any sense at all and one of the one of those people that uh, uh, I'd like to bring onto the show is somebody that is a friend of yours that is also in that place and Brooke has been on the show before and she actually has an update for us as to what's going on with her situation. So with that, let's bring uh, Brooke onto the show. Brooke, hello, how are you? Are you there? Hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hi, guys. Hey, Brooke. How you doing? Hi, doing well. Yourself? Good, thank you. Now, you, you've been listening right along to what Amy's yeah. been describing. Does that ring yeah. true for you? It does in a lot of ways. I'm really proud of Amy because it's really difficult to talk about. I think we talked about this last time. It's just to talk about it out loud makes you sound kind of like a crazy person <laughs> because <laughs> and I feel that for myself. It's like how many times have, you know, especially especially as women, but that doesn't, I mean, just for people in general, if it's like this roller coaster of, yay, I've heard from them, and then, oh, it's not working out, and then, up and down so many times and back and forth that your friends are like, okay, when is enough enough? <laughs> but um, I think what I found well, is that it's been really nice talking to Amy or having readings from Amy because it, it rings more true to be able to talk about it with people who understand the journey. And so I think that's a little bit more rare to find that person because it is different. It really is something that you just know deep down that is real. Yeah, and there's, and, like, I mean, I know some readers, they they pretend to be, like, 
like some have heard that I'm doing this with Twin Flames and now they're all about Twin Flames all of a sudden. And they're like, oh, yes, come to me for a Twin Flame reading. And I've actually um, talked to those same couples and they'll come to me and they'll say, I met my Twin Flame and I'll look into it. And I'm like, that is not your Twin Flame. Like, who did you go to for this information? So other right. readers that are not on the journey, not only do they not understand all the ups and downs and the ins and outs of it, they don't. They haven't been watching all of the collective readings all this time just to keep apprised of the situation. They don't. They don't know what they're doing, and they don't totally understand. They will counsel you uh, according to normal relationships, and this is not right. a normal relationship, and it shouldn't be handled in the same way. So uh, make sure that whoever you go to for a reader is a twin flame themselves, so they understand like how to handle these situations. In your, uh, Amy, and this is for both of you ladies, um, and Amy, in your estimation, is does everybody have a twin flame out there, or is it something that is unique and special to a few? You know, I don't know, and I haven't, um, I, I think, you know, the, I mean, a lot of people have died, so if you have a twin flame that's, that's deceased, then, you know, you're obviously not going to hook up with them or maybe they'll reincarnate. I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. And I'm not really concerned with that, but I do know that those that are coming together, that's, those are the people that I'm, um, that I'm concerned about because those are the ones that have been growing themselves for years. They've wanted to be better people. They just naturally have it in them to want to grow and be more compassionate, loving people. So I want to help them along that path and help them come together so that, um, so that they can really make an impact. So that's, I mean, that's what I focus on. I don't know how many of them are there. I mean, some people say it's the 144,000 in the Bible. Um, I don't, I don't know. I know that it's at least, I mean, there's probably a good five to 10,000 of them watching YouTube videos on the collective, but there's just as many of them that don't even know that they're twin flames floating around out there navigating this totally on their own without any guidance, which is amazing, but it still works um, just the same. So, um, but one thing I wanted to make a point of too is that um, you know, Brooke and I, we're, we're beautiful people. We're just incredible people. We could have any guy, but we are listening to our intuitions as to who the right one is. We're not just going to go out with any Joe Schmo. And we're not going to waste ourselves and spend time with somebody who isn't, who isn't, you know, somebody we want to be with. <laughs> so it's not that we're like these desperate people clinging to some guy with some kind of little giddy crush. That's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about a very mature decision, and it takes a lot of maturity um, and, and solidity to face yourself and face your demons along this whole um, adventure. It's like we are constantly pointed back to loving ourselves more and more and and more. Each of the masculine and the feminine both have to go through this rigorous self-growth process to come together. Um, and even once they are together, that continues. But, you, you know, know it's just, just to clarify that, I mean, Kevin, you've known me a long time. I've dated a lot of guys. I wasn't going to bring guys. that up. <laughs> you know, I, I, I don't I, know. I, I, you know, I could have my up. pick. <laughs> <laughs> I could have my pick. <laughs> you know, well, you I have had your pick. My heart in a special way. And yeah, it's, it's like, it's just, <laughs> he's touched my heart in a special way. And, and God has just grown that seed into a bush. So the bush is just, I don't know. I'm not even going to go with that analogy right now. That's <laughs> going to go into a, to another place. So. Another place, yeah. Okay. Well, you know. I need some fertilizer. <laughs> I'm really spiraling out here. Well, you know, it's interesting that. <laughs> it's interesting that you say that about, about people that may be in a twin flame relationship, but they don't really know it. I have a couple of friends yeah. from high school. And uh, they were dating in high school, and they would date, and then they would break it off, and then she would date other people, and he would, you know, be out there, and then they would get back together again, and then they would break it off. And, and when they finally came to a place when they were committed to each other and, were, and had grown enough, well, they've now been married for 45 years, and, and, I had, and this is a high school sweetheart thing. 
and they're incredibly happy. And that happens so rarely. But that that can be. Is that another example of somebody that falls in love and meets their twin flame and doesn't even know it? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I love when I discover these people. They'll come in for a reading, and I'm talking to them like they're normal people. And you know, I do a lot of counseling with couples and things. I have some people who come in every six months or so just to see how their relationship is going and what they can do to better um, their relationship. And some of them like want to know if they're pregnant. And um, this one couple I predicted, yeah, you're pregnant. And sure enough, they were. But um, so, yeah, when I discover, uh, like, I'll listen to all these things and I'm kind of listen. I'm always listening in the back of my head for the pattern, you know, and they'll start saying this happened, then that happened, then that happened. And then I'll just smile and I'll be like, um, before I jump the gun and tell you this, I need to look at some cards. So I'll do a spread and I'll look at the cards and I'll see some twin flame cards come up. Um, so I do a lot of verifying first and then I look into it intuitively and then I feel for certain signals that I get if it's a twin flame couple. And then I'll tell them, hey, guess what? <laughs> And this is all it is. And uh, like almost always when I tell them what's going on with the twin flame journey, they're like so relieved that it's normal and not to get down on it. Like some people will be like, you know, why did I experience this or that? And like me getting rejected like that normally, like I would have, gosh, in my, in like back a while ago, if somebody would have rejected me like that, I would have never had anything to do with them again. You know, I just would be like not wasting my time. Um, so it's like it, having been prepared, though, for that, that that happens. And then she has to get over it and learn more self-love. I went that route this time for the first time ever. And I was like, OK, what is this telling me about me? And I went inward and I healed and I uh, forgave and I went through all of these different stages and just blossomed and developed really beautifully. And I am not the same person that he met, you know, a year ago. And and I thank him for that, even though, you know, it was inadvertent. It was his higher self ultimately um, helping me become a better person. And I would think I've done the same for him since he's met me as well. But I don't know. I don't have that verification. But I would just assume since we're attached that he's also grown tons since he's met me. But um, well, it's really beautiful that really way. Quickly, like, I mean, you think about how long, at least, like, for, for me and for you, I think it's taken us, like, years to, you know, spiritually and emotionally mature. And I think for these, at least in our case, our guys, it's, it's been like a year or two years or it happens like overnight. Like there's these big shifts that occur that Amy and I both mm-hmm. can feel. And I think that's pretty amazing. I think to give them credit, like it, that's a lot. Oh, yeah. Of this. I can't imagine compacting, you know, what I've learned emotionally and spiritually in 10 years into like a year or like a month. Like that's just, crazy you know like they have they deserve some credit too oh gosh now, yeah now, i mean they've yeah they've been through the ringer they have seriously been through the ringer this past year now now brooke uh one of the things that uh, i wanted to ask you was you have an update for us since the last time you oh, were on yeah. the show tell yeah. us about your update so i heard from my divine masculine about a month ago towards the end of february um, and we had, like, a video chat um, for, like, like over an hour. And it was really beautiful. It was very, um, very lighthearted. It was very honest, very truthful. Um, you know, he was very, very kind with his words and how he felt about me and, you know, that he wanted to see me. We, you know, we don't live in the same um, area. So I felt really good about it. And then I was talking with Amy about, hey, like, I heard from him and this is really great. And then I was like, oh. He's he's still seeing his karmic. He's still seeing somebody else. So then just something inside me, like, just kind of was like, enough's enough. And we had been talking about setting boundaries. I think that was, like, the theme of the month. And so I just said, hey, mm-hmm. I just want to like, know that, like, I know you're seeing somebody. And that's great. And you look really happy. And I hope, like, I want happiness for you. But, you know, long story short, this isn't going to work for me. Like, you know, I wish you all the best of luck in the world. And please take care of yourself. And I mm-hmm. know that he saw it, and he, <laughs> I didn't hear from him for like a month, and I was just going about my life, and like I was having Amy and I talked back and forth, and I'm not as nearly as good of a card reader as Amy, but I try just to help clarify in the little ways that I can, and that was kind of refreshing mm-hmm. to take attention away from like my self and situation, and just doing my own thing. I 
um, officially got accepted to a doctorate program. I, like, had all these great things happen. And it was like, a, and I booked a trip to Maui. Like, I'm doing all these really fun things. In the course of, like, five days, I had all these amazing things happen. And then I heard from him out of nowhere. He sent me a message. It was like, hey, um, I saw that you, you know, got accepted. And he's like, congratulations. That's so exciting. And I was like, thanks. And I wasn't really overly friendly. Um, but, you know, still polite. And then he said that, you know, I wasn't very um, upfront nor very clear on, um, you know, my situation. And I apologize for that. I should have been more honest with you. And so we talked a little bit more. And he's been sending me pictures and of like, you know, just like what you're doing day to day life. Like, you know, I'm up, this is what I'm up to today or, you know, thank goodness it's Friday. And like, um, I just kind of messaging back and forth, but it, but it still kind of feels like the same, same kind of stuff. It's like, didn't you make this choice? <laughs> didn't you? I thought you told me that he said that he knows that she's not the one for him. He did. He said, I've been in a failing relationship for a long time and I'm not happy. And he's like, and I don't know how to get out of it. And I'm working really hard on it. And I said, oh. I'm and he's cool. tied to her through a car loan or something? He's Yeah, he's tied to her because he is a really nice person and helps with like a cosign, like a car loan. So, and that I didn't realize and Amy had said, that's like everybody's going through that. The divine masculine is all like there's something tying them, like something, some legality or something financial that's tying them to their karmic, and that's like the last, like, little string that's holding, holding on to. Um, and I didn't realize that. So that was just like another little synchronicity that really rang true. So in the meantime, I haven't really been as responsive to his messages as I normally would because I just want him to, like, figure it out. He, you know, he has to – I don't want to be with somebody who's still – with somebody, you know, and this is less little hurdle. He's learned a lot, I think, in a short amount of time, and I'm just trying to be patient. Um, but the so he said, are, so he has said, though, yeah, the synchronicities are incredible. <laughs> yeah, but yeah. um, you, I mean, you got, I mean, most women would just love to hear what he said, though, that she's definitely he knows that she's not the one for him, and he's also talked about making plans with you in the future, and you being That's the true. one, the best one for him. <laughs> So it's pretty That's much true. like he's pretty much told you he wants a future with you and he wants to get rid of her. And so now he's working that out. Yeah. And like, so like I, I just wanted I to give some divine feminine hope out there. Yes, I understand. I, it's like it is. It's a lot of information. It's like a lot. I mean, we've been texting back and forth for like a couple of weeks now and it is a lot of information. And who says that you don't have a good memory, Amy? <laughs> Uh, there's certain things I remember. Details, <laughs> there's certain I'm like things. About. I'm like, oh yeah, yeah. It was like the biggest, I was like so excited when I told you about it. Yeah. When you I forgot, he told lot. you that you're the love of his life. You he you forgot he told that. you. That. He didn't say that exactly like that. <laughs> oh come on! Like, <laughs> oh my gosh! He's so he funny. said that he's absolutely he's crazy about me, and that he that he loves everything about me. So that's a little different. yeah, and that he compares every woman he's with with you, and yeah, that's true. So here's the <laughs> here's so, see, this yeah, is like, the thing that happens with divine feminines is they is they they want validation. They constantly want validation, and they want like more. <laughs> and it's just like just let just let <laughs> let them work it out. And, and and I encourage everybody, no matter where you're at in life or what situation you're with. Quit labeling, lib- labeling and pigeonholing people because you got to allow people to be new every minute. Every moment, there can be a whole rebirth and realizations and epiphanies that happen that cause so many incredible changes. And God is in your favor. He wants the twin flames to come together. So let God work it out. If you had total and complete faith that heaven and all of its, it, you know, everything included in it, all the unseen world, um, if they're all pulling for you, don't you think, I mean, they're so much more powerful than, than we are in our wee little brains. So don't you think they're going to work it out? Like, just put your hands up and ride this roller coaster and let it happen, how it happens, right? right. And I think that for him to admit be happy. that he was, you know, he is seeing someone else and that he's not happy and that he apologizes. I think that takes a lot of That's courage, huge. and I think that would be really yeah. scary to admit to somebody. So I think, it, you know, I've been really kind to him, and I still do enjoy talking to him. Like, I'm trying not to 
overdo it just because I know he's still making his choice. And, you know, I don't want him to think that I'm okay with him just continuing to, you know, contact me when he's still with somebody either. But at the same time, I want to show him that I support him. It's a fine balance. I don't want to turn away. I don't want to be a brat. But he has to know that, like, I accept his apology because he was really honest about it and really sincere about it. You know? Yeah. Um, but yeah, he does. He has said some really, really nice, truthful things that, you know, I, I thank you for the reminder because when I get down about stuff where I'm like, oh, is this ever going to work out or is this the same roller coaster? You know, he, he has said some really beautiful things that I do think are really true. I think that he's just still stuck in a little bit of a place of fear, but I think that he's really coming out of it, you know? I mean, he said that I, you know, see all the places you travel to and he's like, and I want to do that. He's like, I want to make a list and I want to, start traveling places with you and doing new exciting things. I do the same things all the time and she doesn't like adventure and I know you are just full of adventure and that's what I want. And so that feels really good to hear those things. And I know that there's a lot going on behind the scenes for probably almost all divine masculines that we just can't even really see. But I think they're changing dramatically overnight. Yes, 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 yes. Ladies, I would like to... it's about healthy healthy boundaries. You just got to have healthy boundaries too. You're not going to be. You're also not going to get walked on. And I mean, these are some powerful women, so you're not going to you're not going to just let them get away with whatever. Yeah. I mean, because they've I'm also come from backgrounds. Yeah, and they have they come from backgrounds of codependency, addictions. I mean, they've got all kinds of things. They've been manipulative. They've lied. So they've got that stuff they're trying to bring forward because that's the tools that they're used to. So we have to set boundaries with them. And make sure they treat us respectfully and make sure they treat us how it's okay for us. You know, it's like kind of like trying to land an airplane. Yeah, Yeah. you you try to land an airplane in the best way that's safest for everybody. And so everyone across the board needs to be treated respectfully, honestly, truthfully. And, um, yeah, just be just be vulnerable enough to share your heart and, and, and like not make it so serious and just be playful. It's all about right. just being playful, flirty, you know, whatever can lighten the mood and just get you to be yourself. You know, that's what you got. Both of you need to focus on as this comes together and not so so much of the serious stuff because the serious really, stuff's always going to be there. That's a really good point. And I've noticed that the more that I just kind of, not when I say like, okay, I'm done, but when I've been really fed up and I'm like, okay, and I've drawn my line in the sand and I've just really, truly let it go. I mean, there's all these talks about surrendering and I was like, yeah, whatever. Cause I'm a pretty, <laughs> I'm a pretty like, you know, I, I'm ambitious and I go out and I get what I want and I pretty independent. But like what I did when I let go and I just went about my business and I booked my next trip and I, you know, did changes to my house and I doing fun stuff. Like that's when I heard from him cause he was out of my mind and I was not thinking about it as much. And I just Perfect. really let yeah. go. And I know that sounds cliche and people are like are seeing all those types of readings and the, you know, the let go, but it, it really is true. You've got to let go. You know, yeah. a couple things before, before we continue, um, because this, this is a very important topic, but there's one thing that is that I would like both of you guys to address. And then after that, uh, Amy has an, uh, a unique experience that I'd like to share. But before we go there, uh, there is now, – now, Brooke, you had said to Amy at one time that you felt like I needed work on my heart chakra. Do you remember that conversation? <laughs> I, I did <laughs> tell her that. <laughs> <laughs> and and I, I would like both of your guidance because – Travis is also on the phone, and we were having a conversation while we were uh, in a break this afternoon, and both of us feel like there's nobody out there for us. Like, there's no twin flame. Mm -hmm. There's nobody that we would even consider being around. And I guess I have a couple of questions. First of all, are we divine masculine or feminine? If, Amy, you could look into that. And, and to tell us which role that we are actually playing. And then how do we get past the anger and the angst that we have towards some people of the opposite sex that have been less than truthful, less than honest with us, so that we can clear the decks, if you will, so that we can go into a hunt 
for our twin flame? Mm. Those are okay. some awesome questions. And very, very, very important. I mean, sometimes the masculine doesn't even know what to do with those feelings. Um, one thing that you can, there are so many different tools on my resources page that you guys can look into. Um, but I would get energy clearing done. There, um, There's Reiki, there's bars, there are all kinds of techniques that are geared toward helping you release that stuff. Um, you could use Matt Kahn's work, um, Byron Katie. Byron Katie is my favorite to refer to because she's just got a really simple, easy four-question process that really gets to the core of your fears and, and your issues and any kind of stressful thoughts you have and helps release their hold on you anymore and you become freer and freer the more you practice that work. Um, but in terms of like discovering whether somebody is like whether you're the divine masculine or feminine, um, that's kind of funny that you say that too because um, I'm I'm a more um, tomboyish kind of person, so I would have thought that I would have been the masculine. And he is like a great dresser and all this, so he you would think that he'd be the feminine. But um, really, it you go along with it's not even shouldn't even be feminine and masculine really, but that's just for a lack of better term better terms, there's the runner and the chaser. There's the person who um, is, who's had, like, typically the masculine or the runner is the one who's had issues with his mother. Um, he's really focused on finances. Uh, he never feels like he has enough money. Um, he is, uh, he's dealt with some codependency addiction issues. He has um, lied and manipulated in the past, been a people pleaser, put on different social masks in front of, um, you know, he's like a different person in front of everybody, kind of a chameleon in a way, or to some degree, some of this, there's a mix, like it's like not everybody is exactly like that or has that issue, um, but they have, they haven't learned to just totally let go and trust the process of life as well as the feminine has. The feminine is more intuitive. She's more in touch with her feelings. She's done a lot of healing already. Um, she's emotionally and spiritually like a little bit ahead of him, at least before they come into union. And then he catches up pretty fast. Um, but she is more has issues with her father. Um, and she has more like self-worth issue. Well, they both feel um, unworthy in certain ways. But the feminine usually has... She feels um, undesirable. She feels like it's unrequited love. She feels rejected. She feels like not good enough. Um, so she has to battle those demons. She's got to take a look at those things and come to realize her own self-worth and her own um, value and what she has to offer. And she also has to realize that she doesn't need to depend on a man to make her happy. She, through this process, learns to make herself happy, to become independently um, uh everything like to be stable financially to be stable in all these areas of her life and know she can take care of herself in a solid way so that's kind of like you take a look at those two different paths and see which one resonates more with you as to whether you're the runner or the chaser but you really know when you start to get in the relationship because you see that you're the one who is kind of needy which that would be the feminine or you're the one who's like oh my gosh this is huge i'm out of here <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of like, well, but but both of them when when they come close to union they both get kind of freaked out and scared because they're facing something huge this is like they're they're standing in front of their fate about to open the door and they're like oh my gosh this could this could crush me if it doesn't work out and so they 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 have to face their biggest fear and talk and have that heart to heart and come together after all this time and see what they've got and see what they can build on well, it's it's clear that that I'm clearly a runner, but nobody's chasing. <laughs> <laughs> that, you know, the more okay. So this is like going back to what I said earlier that you know if you do have a twin flame, if um, if you do have a twin flame, then that means I've already read into your energy and felt that you do. But if you do then um, anybody who is, like, developing themselves like crazy and really opening their hearts and, and going full force into life and wanting to be to be better, um, more expanded, and more compassionate, those people 
the the more the higher you become in your vibration, the closer this person's coming to you. So don't worry too much about that. Just let it happen like the magic it does. I I didn't see mine coming. I I didn't even know when he was sitting right in front of me. <laughs> you know, well, I didn't know until me, after he walked away, and then all this stuff started happening. Amy, let me let me explain the difference from my perspective, and I think that there's a whole bunch of folks that are in my boat. Uh, when I was doing, and, and a couple of years ago, I did the Martha Norwalk show. We we subbed for her and uh, one Sunday a month, and this was a three-hour show on KKNW uh, in Seattle. And uh, one of the topics that we discussed was relationships, and uh, the, I think the author, the, the, we had an author on, and the name of the book was uh, Don't Kiss That Frog, meaning that women and men get together, but sometimes the guys are not ready, and he's actually a frog, and so forth. And we talked about this, and I made the statement repeatedly, a lot that there is not a prayer in the world that I want to have another relationship with another female ever. And a lady called and said, and, and, and the call screener took the call and said, uh, um, well, let's, let's go out to lunch. I want to take you out to lunch, uh, meaning me. Her name was Susan, I believe. And uh, uh, my response to that was, tell her no. How does someone like me, who is convinced that he will never have another relationship of value because, quite frankly, my relationships with women, and my son is in the same boat as, as we speak, and he is on the line with us as well, and Travis, feel free to interject. But how, how do you guys, being divine feminines, how do you two suggest that a guy like me gets over the blockages and the hurt and the anger I feel towards the opposite sex as far as relationship goes, now don't get me wrong, I love women. I can't talk to men. Men are, men disturb me. Women are the people, the, the, the desired, desired people that I like because I think you're a whole lot smarter than us guys are. Uh, but, but how do you get people like me or my son to open up and to accept the, the twin flame? Because quite honestly, if the twin flame is out there and they show up, I'm not going to even accept it. How do you get us to do that? It, 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 I don't well, know if that's appropriate for this show or not, but here no, it is. A, it's a valid point. It's a really valid point. And there's been times where I felt very similar, you know, to, toward, towards men. But the, the question is, is that, you know, when you have so much heat coming off of your voice about it, and obviously, you know, I think, a lot, I think people in general tend to make generalized statements, and it's easy. It's easy to say, all women don't want to date me. All women are, you know, not going to be the right person for me. There's no one out there for me because one or a handful of relationships didn't work. But let's just say you even were like Amy and dated a lot of guys. That's still not all of the men in the whole world, right? There's billions of people in the world. So when you really start to retrain your words, because I believe that words are very powerful, and not that all women are going to hurt me if I venture out into a relationship, it's, you know what, this, this woman that I dated this time and this woman and this woman hurt me. And then kind of really narrow it down. So get rid of the generalized statements and really start training, retrain, just try it for like one day, see how it makes you feel, because you can always go back to what you're doing right now. Like just try to really focus on <laughs> making accurate, true statements, not generalized statements. And then when you get down to those accurate, true statements where you're really like narrowing down and isolating these individual relationships. What about these relationships are triggering you so much? What's making you so angry? Why are you still holding on to it? Because the more attention you give it, the more that you're really, like, fanning the flames and the more energy you're giving it. And as hard as mm -hmm. it is when you can get to a place where it's like, you know what, I'm, I'm glad that didn't work out. There's so many times there's guys that I really wanted to make it work. I really, I thought they were great. I thought I really want to make it work with this person. And looking back, I'm like, I'm really glad that it didn't work with that person. Like, that could have been my life. Like, I could have been stuck in that, or I could have been dealing with that. You know what? And then I'm thankful. I'm glad. I thank you for that breakup. Thank you for that argument. Thank you that he cheated on me, because that's not the life that I would have mm -hmm. wanted. And if you can get to a spot where you can be thankful for the experience, 
and just like wish them well and let them go, it's the most freeing thing in the world. And I'm not going to say I'm not perfect. There's still people that like I'll see, I'll run into that I've dated or known and you know before and I don't even like say hi because I'm bratty like that but the bottom line is that <laughs> I've, I really I've let them go I really I don't think like I've let them go I'm not say that I'm like that good of a person I'm still going to say hello to them but I've let them go and I'm at peace with it because it doesn't bother me anymore and it's like when you're really if you can start seeing patterns in yourself and for me, it was helpful when I started going to yoga. When I started going to yoga, that's when I really became more comfortable with myself and, like, was really open to, okay, what's it with me that is making me upset about this situation or these people? Because you can't change other people. You can't change how other people react. You can only change how you react. And when you change from being a reactor to a responder instead of that visceral, you know, just reaction to things and you have time to contemplate it and then respond to it, and I think that's when you can get to a point where you can let some things go. But for you, um, I think that now your next two homework assignments, Kevin, are to be working on your um, solar plexus <laughs> chakra and your crown chakra because I'm seeing a lot of yellow and purple for you. Okay, what is yellow and purple? Yellow, solar plexus chakra, the uh, yellow will be about, like, your, like, confidence. It'll be about, like, being able to start a new chapter, being able to be positive and see the sunshine and things. And your um, crown chakra is, is, like, your your connection to the heavens, if you will, like your uh, your inner wisdom, like your intuitiveness. And so if you can work on those two next, I think that it'll be a good project for you in conjunction with maybe letting go of some things, if you want to. You, know? you can always find it. Yeah, it's so easy to just go on YouTube, too, and just put... Um, aligning chakra meditation. Just yeah. do a guided chakra meditation, and then they'll align all your chakras through that meditation. Lie, like, you do that every day. There's people are like, and oh, it'll you clear you, know, you up. You can journal, and you should, you know, write down your dreams and journal. And I, yeah, that's a really great tool. I'm sure that works for a lot of people, but like, I don't do that because I just, I just don't. So, like, you'll just have to find like what works for you. Like, people will suggest a lot of things. Just find what works for you because. Nobody's perfect, and you're not ever going to be perfect. So just do what works for you and let go of that. Because once you can let go of that, you'll just you'll feel so much lighter, and you'll look at things more positively, and your things will open up for you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amy said, "Yep, yep." What she said. That's it. That's it. I wanted to. I wanted to bring <laughs> since Travis is on the loan on the line. I just want to get a little bit of input from him. Travis, does that make sense to you? My fellow hurt male. <laughs> yeah, that that absolutely makes sense. Um, my problem is through the last few few relationships that I've been in, I realize that I have, as a man, zero power in a relationship. Like my ex had the ability and the was in the position to take my car, take my complete livelihood, and effectively put me on the street if she chose to. I would al- because you allowed al- it. Absolutely because everything. Huh? Because you allowed it. You gave your power away. Well, that is true. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't her. That was you. Here, take this. <laughs> I don't feel worthy. Here, take it. Yeah, that's probably fair. Can I- can I buy your look, please? Exactly not, I mean, that's what I'm talking about, though. Start looking at things through a different line. Start looking at it be like, okay, even though it seems like it seems backwards, it seems totally counterintuitive, look at things through the lens of, okay, what could I have done differently to to have made it healthier for myself? Or what could I do differently next time? Like, not to, I don't know how to make it sound, like, um, not to make it sound like it was your fault, because it's not your fault. But, like, how would you want it to go the next time around? Because being in like a true partnership is like equal power. Mm-hmm. Travis. We're in, we're in, <laughs> sorry, I thought that was rhetorical. <laughs> no, that was kind of directed at you, my boy. 
I have. Yeah, that's what I mean by. Yeah, I, I mean, don't want Just it. take personal responsibility. You you can't blame anybody else for anything. It's all up to you. That's where you take your well, power that, back is when you take a look at how you're treating you. Right. Well, that's where it comes from. Is scared that I will slip into that people pleasing pattern again. Yeah, I mean, and that's a valid fear, but um, just just start working on yourself. Let go of that fear. Stay in the moment. Try to stay out of those old stories, and just yeah. let some new breath come in. Let some new air come in. You know, you're it, and that's. I mean, you're going to be naturally pulled to um, develop more. So just follow those promptings to develop and learn more. And as you do, it kind of it can even sneak up on you. You know, as you're listening to this show, you've made so so many transformations already, and a lot of them probably subconscious. And you may not even know, but right now you may not even put up with any BS. You don't know. You're not in a relationship yet, but you, maybe you'll find yourself in a situation soon where somebody's trying to pull one over on you and you call her on it, you know, and then you're like, whoa, what, where'd that come from? So sometimes it really does sneak up on you just by having these realizations and just by seeing, I don't want to be treated like that anymore. Um, like for me, I used to have like no boundaries. Um, and I used to be able to be talked into just about anything. And I used to be able to, like, I, I couldn't stand up to anybody or stand up for myself or any of that. Um, I'd get walked over all the time. And now it's like, nobody's going to pull that kind of crap on me. And, and I feel like super powerful and I can, I can stand up for other people. I can stand up for myself. I can be like, yeah, hell no. Um, but. It, it didn't just happen, like, by me going, oh, I think I'm going to be a strong person now. It just happened over a series of different things I was exposed to over a period of time that helped me develop. And I just kept having a more and more open mind and kept expanding my mind and kept wanting to know more and kept wanting to be more healed. And I was doing Katie's work and I was doing reading Matt Kahn and all these different venues. Like Brooke was saying, you can choose whatever resonates with you at any particular time. But you're naturally going to be pulled more and more and more to a more and more loving place. Like the girl, Anna, that was in the abusive relationships episode, you know, she's kind of pretty jaded. She's like, somebody would have to really bend over backwards and do pull all these tricks to even get me to go out with them. And, you know, that's that's a fine protective thing to do. But, um, you know, when you can open your arms um, and just realize what, that you're really grateful for all that stuff, of your past and you can totally heal it and not take it personally anymore. And you can just be like, Oh, well that was an awesome lesson. I'm so glad that happened. When you can get to that place and just kind of not care, then it doesn't have to, um, it doesn't have to haunt you or come after you anymore. It's the things that you suppress and keep down that keep coming up with full force. So if you say that you shouldn't be treated this certain way, you're going to get treated that certain way. So make peace with that thing. Make peace with yourself being upset and jaded and angry and be like, hey, it's okay that I'm upset and angry and jaded. You know, that's where I'm at right now. Embrace that because the more you embrace stuff, the more you let it go. So just keep letting everything go and don't let anything really stick. Just be totally okay with feeling awful and be totally okay with being unhealed and be totally okay with wherever it is that you're at. And the more okay with with you that you are the more you're going to let go and let go and let go. And that stuff is just not going to be drawn to you anymore. But the other part of it, too, is like it's never going to be perfect. You know, it, like like for me, like I, I just, I'm not, I'm certainly not perfect. And like I said, I still don't say hello to people in the grocery store if I see them because I'm still kind of a brat. But I've let go enough <laughs> that I don't want to bother me. You know, and I think for me, the easiest place to start out was to start looking at, like, why I'm thankful it didn't work out. Like, that kind of helped me ease into it. Like, oh, gosh, they're, that person is, like, married and, like, has kids now, but, like, oh, they just turned out to be such a, you know, a different person or somebody that I would never be with now. Like, I'm really thankful that didn't work out or or whatever reason. So you can start looking at that way, like, why why I'm thankful it didn't work out even if it's something really small, and that was a really easy way for me to kind of get start giving into the 
forgiving and forgetting and letting go mode. Well, yeah, I, for and one, I have an very... exercise. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> well, I have an exercise in my blog post. Um, it's all just energy. And there is one in there called Thank You, God, for My Misery. And what you do is you list, you know, um, thank you, God, that I went through this horrible relationship. Thank you, God, that I was treated like a dog or whatever it is. And you go through and you list all the advantages and benefits as to why that happened. Why was that a really good thing that that happened? And after you do the exercise several times, um, you know, it might take six to ten times, and, it, and you can even be sarcastic in there and everything. But once you've gone through this several times, you start to kind of laugh and have humor about it and realize that, oh, my gosh, it's all been there to totally support me. It's all been a gift. And you have this epiphany. Even the bad stuff was really good for me. It was really great. And that's really when you become empowered. Well, I would like to thank both of you ladies for your psychoanalysis of my son and me, and I think it will be very helpful. <laughs> but but, but there's, there's one thing that I wanted to mention, and, and this was something that happened to you just the other day, Amy, and I'd like mm-hmm. you to describe what happened and then share with us the results of that. Okay, um, I was trying to think of what I was going to talk about and what I wasn't going to talk about on on the show, because this was very vulnerable for me. I was very, very nervous about this talk, and and I went to bed early, which I very rarely ever do, and had been sleeping for a few hours, and then I was woken up, and these words were, like, running through my head, and so I grabbed my phone real quick, and I just started typing everything that was coming to my mind and this is like a half asleep half awake mode and I basically channeled a bunch of information about Twin Flames that I um, can read to you guys now I thought it was uh, it sums it up sums up the Twin Flame journey pretty darn well I think (laughs) Um, okay it's all about trusting in the unseen and having faith The Divine Feminine is the lighthouse guiding the Divine Masculine back home, while they both pass a series of moral and self-worth tests, so they develop and mature to the point they can take personal responsibility and stay in union, where they will have the biggest impact. Those that come together prematurely separate till they're ready, but they will keep being drawn back by instinct. There is an undeniable magnetic component pulling each person to their counterpart that becomes unstoppable as each part develops into its full capacity. It's like dancing blindfolded. You learn to trust your instincts, become more aware of what you're self-conscious about or feel unworthy of. We learn wisdom and discernment. We see what we believe is required to be loved, then challenge those boundaries. We push and morph past any confines as a butterfly morphs into a butterfly, building strength all the time till it bursts free. In the cocoon, it doesn't know what destiny awaits it, yet it feels an instinct to just keep pushing past and becoming more. It may very well fear leaving the comfort of the cocoon, but that never stops it. It always emerges and flies in all its glory, delighting all who see it, inspiring awe and wonder, free. We are matured by our love for each other, which is in great part carried over from many past lives, many which ended in us not being able to be together. So there is now an intense yearning for completion, and as long as both twins are alive today and have been doing their own inner work, they will be drawn together against all odds. They are walking, breathing miracles. Their stories inspire and expand the hearts of all who hear. When these two come together, they undergo another series of tests designed to more deeply heal old wounds of the past while experiencing a nurturing and safe environment in which they feel understood and loved no matter what. As these two heal, they heal the collective. As the collective heals, the planet heals. As the planet heals, wars are headed off. Common sense is restored. Rational thinking wins out and cool heads prevail. Love wins. And it all starts with the catalytic moment that sparks these two and their courage to face their inner demons, essentially the darkness of the world. Through their their self-sacrifice, the shedding of their egos, They die on the cross with Jesus to inspire the world to love. Lead the way, lightworkers, to a new world, unveiling and unfolding behind the scenes, while we busy ourselves with the mundane. 
become the steady foundation on which a new earth is built and help them inspire it into manifestation. This is no lustful love. It's your duty and your calling, and you will hear it loud and clear in the silence and peace of your soul. Follow that prompting and you will not regret nor be forsaken, dear loves. You will reach out and find the very hand of God will hold you steady and help you prosper. Again, not for selfish intent, but to shine and be an example of what is possible in the light of love. Your divine masculine knows who is the one who makes his heart sing despite what his head tells him. Now he must beat all odds and go against all he's been programmed to be by society and family, drop all he knows that is familiar and safe in the world, and follow God in his heart alone, standing on his own as his own man. And you, the divine feminine, are to embrace your own value, challenge your old ways of reacting and clinging, and respect and trust him in his process and be the loving support he needs from afar, despite his actions or reassurance from him during this separation phase. Once in union, both of you must put to test to make yourselves happy and merely be there to to support and spot each other and help work through these issues out with your intense compassion and support so natural to you already and so wasted on your throwing pearls to pigs of the past. You are equipped. You are ready. Respect one another and go forth in love. Wow, that's incredible. <laughs> now, I wanted to ask you, <laughs> in just, in just yeah? follow up to that, do you have a particular message for your masculine? Uh, yes, I did. I actually put something together. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> and, and first of all, that was first a, of all, that let was me... a lot to read. <laughs> and now yes, I have another Yes, yeah. it was. Well, you know, what's <laughs> interesting about that is that, that, uh, that had you written that and rewritten it and so forth, it would have been more, it would have been easier for you to read, but since you were half asleep when you wrote it and you were channeling it, and it's <laughs> almost like new material to you. Right. <laughs> and, and I don't so, remember writing it. <laughs> yeah, nor do you remember sending it to me, because you sent it to me as well, and I wrote it, or read it, oh, and it was very oh, wow. it was very good. Yeah. So, so do you have a message for your divine masculine? I do. Okay. We both asked for this and God delivered. It's become quite obvious to me as I hope it has become to you as well in your heart of hearts. I'm sorry for my part in how all this has gone down. I was warned not to tell you too soon, but I know there's a gift in it that will someday we'll better understand. Pray to know the truth in all things. Neither of us are perfect, but whatever obstacles lie in our way, or no matter how impossible the situation appears, I believe the floodgates will open up if we choose love. But whatever we choose, just know I will always be here for you if you need me, and you will always hold a very special place in my heart. I've got your back no matter what. Amy, that was that was incredible. That was a uh, um, and that was a moment that you had late at night when you were half asleep, and that just kind of came through you. It's, it's it really is remarkable. And then I passed back out. Yep. <laughs> And it gives us, you know, it, it really does give us all a sense of hope. I think that the, the world is changing in remarkable ways this year in 2018, and this is just one of them. Um, the, the protests that were yesterday about, about saving lives from gun violence and the Me Too movement and all of these things are coming to fruition, as uh, is the Twin, fl twin Flames. So it's it's an incredible mm -hmm. moment in time, and you are on the forefront of it, my dear. You yeah. both are. Yeah, yeah. That it's a feels crazy pretty journey. powerful. It's that's definitely. Yeah. It does. It it does. I mean, I I feel like somewhat of a guinea pig sometimes. I, you know, when people come into me and they say something that just happened, I'm like, oh, I've been through that. It's okay. <laughs> <You know? laughs> You have to learn to, like, in my position, you have to learn to be very brave, courageous, and face and face yourself and face those demons fearlessly, or you will not survive. <laughs> That's very true. Travis, you sound like you want to say something. Oh, uh, no. No, I was just uh, clearing my throat. That's all. Okay. 
<laughs> very good, Brooke. Uh, thank you very much for being on this episode. It's been it's been quite a remarkable episode, and it's going to be very impactful to a lot of people. Do you have anything else you'd like to add before we go? I don't think so. Thank you so much for having me. It's always such a treat. Indeed, Amy. Oh, gosh, with all that that I've already said, I really don't have anything further to say at this point. (laughs) I would just say thank you both for being here. Thank you both for being the people that you are. And thank you, Travis, for being the young man that you are. And I'm glad that that person that was in your life is no longer there as a concerned father. So I'm thankful for that. (laughs) I'm thankful. I really am thankful for this podcast and for what you guys do. Uh, it, it's pretty remarkable. And uh, with that, Amy, would you close with uh, uh, the, the scene or with the saying that that is attributed to you that, by the way, in a couple of months is going to be a really big deal. So uh, if you would mind sharing that with us. Yeah, just just remember, fear isn't real. And we'll see you next time on The Satori Show. been listening to the satori show please visit amy's website www.amysatori.com to find out more about this incredible talent the views expressed during this podcast are those of the host guests and callers and are not necessarily those of management or the owners of this podcast what you need to know is that amy is a wonderful teacher guide and communicator for the unseen world what she does not pretend to be is a doctor fortune teller seer of world events or predictor of what is to come what amy presents is real based on her understanding of the world and communication with that unseen world. As always, you're free to decide for yourself as to what to believe. Regardless, we love and accept you completely just as you are. And thanks again for listening to The Satori Show.